Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori, if you're new here, and today we are going to do some easy, cheap dinner recipes. I'm going to give you four recipes that you can make throughout the week. And the goal this week was to spend absolutely nothing. So I am going to shop from my pantry. All of these recipes have minimal ingredients and a ton of flavor. If you are new here, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. We are almost to 8,000 subscribers and I am doing a huge giveaway when that happens. So make sure you are subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content. Now you will see with a lot of these meals, we are going to use some of the same ingredients. So feel free to change it up in your kitchen if you would like. I do like to shop my local farmer's market. They do have a bin on the side of the road and it's just a great time to go pick out your produce, especially winter produce. That are some of my favorite items to pick up. And I, and I like to store them in a cool, dark place, kind of like a makeshift cellar if you don't have one, just so we can grab and go from them throughout the winter. This this week I have pulled a few onions, a few zucchinis, and some sweet potatoes. The first recipe is going to be the sweet potato and sausage goulash and here is what you are going to need. I used a half box of pasta, I used some cubed sweet potatoes, onions, and zucchini and like I said you can switch up your veggies depending on what you have and I'm going to use a half box of that pasta. I'm going to use this pasta sauce. They were out of bell pepper at the grocery store, so I found this sweet pepper rustic pasta sauce from Bertoli. It was on sale for $2.19. Um, it does have mushrooms in it, but I could not taste them. And then I'm gonna top my husband's with some of this Italian sausage. We really like the Beyond sausage as well, but that is a little pricey and we were trying to keep it under $5. So just start out by boiling a large pot of water and you're actually going to put your sweet potatoes in there first. You're going to boil it uncovered for about 10 minutes. You can add salt to the boiling water if you would like. And then when that is all done, you are going to add your pasta. We are using penne pasta, but you're welcome to use elbow macaroni, which is the typical classic goulash ingredients. Again, we shop the pantry, so we have this penne instead and we're going to boil that for an additional seven minutes so it's al dente and then i'm going to put this sauce at the bottom of the pan here and add in my other vegetables so i chose some onion and a little bit of cubed zucchini I'm gonna give this a stir and I'm actually going to fill that jar of sauce up with one cup of water, so about a half of that jar, and I'm going to add that in just to create a little bit of thinness within the sauce, and I think it cuts down on the acidity as well, but that's just my opinion. And then after that is simmering for around five minutes, add back in your pasta and your sweet potatoes and then simmer for an additional 10 minutes and you are good to go. So I served my husband's and son's with this sausage and then I enjoyed mine with a little bit of my homemade vegan Parmesan cheese. I make mine with cashews and some nutritional yeast, but super delicious and I garnished with some rosemary which actually gave it this really wonderful flavor. I know it seems so minimal but just try it, trust me. And now moving on to this butternut squash tortellini. This is delicious. I urge you to try this recipe. Here is what you're going to need. So this is minimal ingredients as well. Some of the ingredients are a little different, so stick with me, but you're gonna need a box of cheese tortellini. We like the Kite Hill, but use whatever you want. You're going to need some butternut squash soup. You can serve with sausage if you'd like. A little bit of diced onions, as well as green chilies. Now I know that seems a little different, but the sweet and spice together just gives it this really wonderful flavor. 
So start out by putting some onions and your diced green chilies into a hot pan. And I'm not going to use any oil because that would go over our budget of $5. I'm just going to use some veggie stock to saute everything together. And then I'm going to sprinkle some salt and pepper on here. And this could be a time if you wanted to add the sausage, if everybody in your family eats meat, but I'm going to leave it on the side until I dish everything up. And once that comes to a boil, go ahead and add half of your soup. Stir that all together, bring it up to another simmer, and then you are going to add your tortellini. Now these cook fast, I'm warning you, so give it about five minutes with the lid on top and then you are good to go. I served mine with some fresh sage and fresh parsley and it was just absolutely delicious. You could sprinkle on some sharp cheddar cheese on here and I think that would give it a really beautiful flavor. But this was probably my favorite meal of the week. It was super delicious and just different with the flavor. So I urge you to try this one as well. next night we had chicken broccoli and rice bake this just reminds me of my childhood you're going to need some chicken breast we're gonna do two you could use four if you are making a larger meal for a big family we're gonna have some diced onion as well as a cup and a half of veggie stock you're going to have half a bag of frozen broccoli, so six ounces, and then you're going to need some cheese sauce, we like the ragu, as well as a cup of rice. Go ahead and put about three tablespoons of that cheese sauce on the bottom of your pan. Again, not using olive oil or butter, so just use the cheese sauce so it doesn't stick, and then place your chicken breast on top. Then following the broccoli, as well as some salt and pepper. And then just put the onions on top of your chicken. And then in goes your rice, just a cup of rice. And then go ahead and add your one and a half cups of veggie stock or chicken stock or whatever you wanna use for this and cover it with foil. You're gonna bake this at 400 for around 45 minutes, and then you can take it out and start shredding your chicken. You could also take your chicken out. I've done this before, put it in a mixer and it shreds it pretty fast, but I had time today, so I didn't mind doing it. And I ended up serving mine with some fresh black pepper as well as some sage. And this was super delicious. My husband and son loved it. The next night we had some chickpea and cauliflower tiki masala. This of course was my favorite meal, super delicious. I served it with some coconut cream and here is what you are going to need. So start out with some diced onions as well as a can of rinsed chickpeas a half a bag of frozen cauliflower, and your favorite simmer sauce, as well as a cup and a half of veggie stock. And then I added some quinoa in there. I had a half cup left and it just needed to get used up. So it's not completely necessary that you use quinoa. You could use rice instead. Lentils are really great with this, but it is just fine as is too if you didn't have any of those grains. So add in your cauliflower to the bottom of the pan, and then on top of that, your chickpeas. And then go ahead and add your quinoa or whatever grain that you're going to use. Then your onions, and then your sauce. Make sure you get every last bit of that sauce. It is super delicious. Go ahead and add your veggie stock. And with this one, you are going to give it a stir just because you don't want that cauliflower to be sitting down there by itself with all that water. You want it to have all that good saucy flavor. Cover it with some foil. 
You're gonna bake this at 400 for around 45 to 50 minutes and it comes out fluffy and delicious. You could serve this over more brown rice or quinoa if you wanted, but it's super filling as is, very high protein and healthy for you. And I just sprinkled mine with a little bit of coconut cream on top. Not necessary, but it gives it a cooling flavor in my opinion. Sometimes these jarred sauces can be very spicy. my friends that is going to do it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed these recipes and got some inspiration for your week if you have any questions or comments drop them down below as always stay adventurous stay creative and we'll see you next time bye